Hello everyone, Rebels of Cloud9 here, and in this video I'll be building the Mobius 1-1000 scale USS Kelvin from the 2009 Star Trek movie. I know that the newer Star Trek movies aren't the most popular with some fans, but I really love the design of the Kelvin class. So when Mobius announced the kit and that it was going to be in 1000 scale, I was very excited, and I couldn't wait to get my hands on one of these kits. However, I decided that I wanted to paint this model as if it had appeared or during the original Star Trek series, so the colors won't match what was seen in the 2009 film. There are race panel sections that represent damage, and the ship was too far away from a star base, so the crew had to patch up the ship themselves. I decided to fill in the recess section with some styrene, and then I sanded away the raised panels to smooth out the saucer section. It was a lot of work to remove and polish the plastic, and I greatly questioned my motives with this build, which was something I did often on this project. I used Mr. Surfacer to fill in the tiny gaps and stray scratches from scribing and sanding. Once it dried out, I could sand it to a smooth polish. To create the glowing effect with the warp engine and Bussard collector, I used clear paints, in this case Mr. Hobby Clear Blue. At the time I had great difficulty airbrushing these paints, so I hand painted the parts. Afterwards I painted the insides with some silver paint. The silver creates a reflection through the clear and gives a glowing effect. For the Bussard collector on the warp engine, I painted Tamiya clear orange. This model was a lot bigger than I had expected, and so Mobius designed the kit properly to sustain its own weight. They did add extra bracers throughout the model. The kit's not really designed to be lit up, but should a modeler wish with some extra effort, this kit could be lit. There was quite a bit of sanding that I needed to do along the warp engine and secondary hull to reshape and get the curve back into the plastic. And as a result, I lost some of the panel line detail. I used my Tamiya scribing saws to reshape the panels, and then I used my Tamiya scriber to cut out the panel lines so they would be wider and match the pre-existing panels. This next stage of the model will get a bit repetitive, as I'm basically doing the same thing. Laying down tape, then painting, then adding more tape, then painting, adding more tape. There was so, so much tape that I used on this project. I 
I'm starting with a base coat of Tamiya XF53 Neutral Grey. This will be my first layer in what in sci-fi modeling is called Azteking. It's a process where you paint on small panel sections to break up the monotony of an all grey or white subject. I'm going to keep this build close to colors seen in the original Star Trek series. My next color is Mr. Hobby Aqueous Light Gold Grey, which is an excellent Star Trek color for anyone building a model. The footage is missing, but I used 1mm Tamiya tape to create the thin strips that would run along the panel lines. I first drew a picture of what I wanted the Aztecing to look like, and what each color of grey was going to be. This simplified my painting process. I estimated that I put nearly 1500 pieces of tape onto this model, which so far has been my record. Right now, all of the tape looks like a confusing mess, but in the end it will work out. Or at least that's what I'm hoping for. And for those wondering, laying down all of this tape was actually a lot of fun. The hardest and most tedious part of this build was cutting out all of that tape. I actually found this stage of laying down the tape to be very, very relaxing. For the next color I used Tamiya Sky Grey. I started with the darkest greys first on this build and progressively got lighter as I went along. I looked for greys that would stand out and complement each other, like using a white grey next to a grey green color. These little differences will help out a lot with the final Aztec in color, so don't be too discouraged with the colors looking like a mess. I applied Tamiya Japanese Navy Grey, as some modelers consider this to be the closest off-the-shelf paint for the original Enterprise. I thought it might be insulting that if I didn't add this color in somewhere. Also, if you look at the tape on the warp engine, you can see I cut out tiny squares. This will help break the tedium of all the rectangles and add more of an interesting pattern to these sections. Lastly, I used Mr. Color Light Grey. If you are a sci-fi modeler, get yourself a few bottles of this paint. It's a really nice bright white grey that will be very useful on sci-fi subjects that are mostly white. Now that I'm removing the masks, you can see the bold differences in the grey tones. At the moment this looks quite garish, but we've still got one more step to complete this Azteking. You can see some paint buildup around the pieces of tape. Some of these paints were difficult for me to spray, and as a result I sprayed it on a bit too thick, and built up a bit of a layer around the edges. This project was really helpful in teaching me how to airbrush lighter layers and how to do it properly in the future. However, to fix this issue, I took some 1500 sanding sponge and carefully sanded away as much of the paint buildup as I could. 
I didn't quite get it all, but it was a lot worse in the beginning. And finally, we're going to uniform the Aztec ink. I took more of the Mr. Color light gray and thinned it about 70%, and then I lightly sprayed it onto the model, making slow passes and gradually building up the paint and building up the light gray color. I didn't really have a method for this stage. I basically kept lightly spraying until I was satisfied with the end finish. However, you need to be careful at this stage, as it's really easy to overdo it and ruin all the work you put into that Aztec ink. Remember, wet paint will appear differently than when it's dry. Keep in mind, once the paint will dry, it will appear a bit darker. For the fins on the back of the warp engine, I painted on Tamiya Titanium Silver. This is just a really fun color to airbrush, and I think it fits in really well with the colors used in the Star Trek universe. I wanted to add some pennants down the side, similar to the ones on the Enterprise and other Starfleet ships. I decided to keep it simple, that less was more, and added two stripes down the warp engine at a slight angle. I used Tamiya Flat Red, which is a really bright, bold red that stands out really well against the rest of the grey finish. I sprayed it on, slowly layering up the paint so I didn't run the risk of wet paint bleeding through the tape, as doing touch-ups on the aztec would be really difficult. Some of the paint did bleed through the deep panel lines, but this would be hidden once the panel line wash was added. Two styles of decals were included with this kit. One set is faded and a bit more weathered, and the other is bold and clear. This was my first Mobius kit, so I didn't know what to expect when I used these decals. But all I needed for them was a bit of Microsol decal solvent, and these decals conformed really snug to the surface of the model. I painted Tamiya Panel Line Accent Color, dark grey, into all of the panel lines. 
This was the final bit of detail that I added to the model. This is an enamel based panel wash that, once it's dried, is easily cleaned up using some Tamiya enamel thinner and a cotton swab. Before finally assembling the parts, I gave the model a flat coat using Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish, thinned with some Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. This is a really great acrylic flat base that levels really well and isn't as intense as other flat coats that can gray up the original paint. Attach the warp engine and hull to the saucer section I used Mr. Just Super Glue. This is a super glue I've had a lot of good results with as it's very, very strong. And this wraps up my build of the Mobius USS Kelvin. I had such a fun time building this model, and I love having one of my all-time favorite Star Trek ships sitting on my shelf. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this build. Until next time, this is Rebels of Cloud 9, signing out. Thank you.